Welcome back to our lecture series, Math 1060, Trigonometry for Students at Southern Utah University. As usual, I'll be your professor today, Dr. Andrew Misseldine. In lecture 21, we started to talk about solving trigonometric equations. We focused on linear and quadratic trigonometric equations. In lecture 22, we're going to continue to develop these methods. Now, in addition to the solely algebraic methods we introduced in lecture 21, in lecture 22, we're going to also use trigonometry to help us solve trigonometric equations. In particular, we're going to use trigonometric identities to transform the equation into a linear quadratic equation involving sines or cosines like we saw previously in lecture 21. Basically, we're going to use identities to convert the equations we see right now into equations of the format we saw in the previous lecture so that we're in a better situation to solve them. So for example, let's say we want to solve the equation 2 cosine x minus 1 equals sine a uh, secant of x, excuse me. And we need to do this on the interval 0 to 2 pi. So we want to find all solutions from 0 to 2 pi. Clearly, we're looking for solutions which are in radians. That's an important thing to remember there. We don't need the general solution, just up to 2 pi there. Um, how are we going to solve this equation? Well, we have a cosine, right? We also have a secant. How are we going to deal with this? Well, it's important to recognize from our fundamental identities that secant is the reciprocal of cosine. Secant is 1 over cosine. So if I make that substitution, I can convert the secant into a cosine. And so we get the equation 2 cosine x minus 1 equals 1 over cosine of x like so. For which now we have fractions in play here, but whenever you have an equation, fractions don't have to be your nemesis. You can always clear the denominator. So we don't want the fraction on the right-hand side, so we're going to times the right-hand side by cosine of x, the denominator. But whatever is good for the goose is good for the gander. That is to say, whatever we do to one side of the equation, we have to do the same thing to the other side of the equation so that equality is preserved. So we times the right-hand side by cosine of x to clear out the denominator. We have to then multiply the left-hand side by cosine of x, then distribute it through. And we end up with 2 cosine squared x minus cosine of x. This is equal to 1. Um, if we subtract 1 from both sides, we'll just move that over there. We end up with 2, 2 cosine squared x minus cosine x minus 1 equals 0, like so. And so we're able to turn this into a quadratic equation in terms of cosine of x, for which then we could try to solve this thing by factoring. We could try to solve it by the quadratic formula. And when it comes to factoring, there's a lot of techniques one could use here. The reverse foil method we've seen before. This one, I think I can probably just kind of guess my way through it. Because after all, how do you get a cosine squared? Well, you have to have a cosine times a cosine, right? How do you get a 2 cosine squared? Well, one of them has to be 2. The other one has to have a coefficient of 1. How are you going to multiply together and get a, a negative 1? Well, you have to have 1 times 1, in which case it's going to be positive. One's positive, one's negative. And then this has to combine together to be negative, negative cosine. So we need to have like a negative 2. Um, so let's do something like this, negative, positive. Kind of guess your way through that. Again, you can use the reverse FOIL method, as you've seen before. And just if you're going to guess, you have to check it, of course. 2 cosine times cosine is cos 2 cosine squared. You get negative one times positive one, that's a negative one. Then you're going to get a two cosine plus a cosine. So that's negative two plus one, which is a negative one. There we have it. This is the correct factorization. But once you factor it, of course, we then have to treat the two separate pieces. So there's the first possibility that two cosine x plus one equals zero. So if we think about that, two cosine x plus one equals zero, we get two cosine x is equal to negative 1. Divide that by 2. Cosine of x equals negative 1 half. Um, if you're negative cosine, that means you're in the second quadrant and the third quadrant. Uh, cosine of x equals 1 half exactly, again, just thinking of the first quadrant. That happens at a 6 degree angle, but we're working in radians, so we're going to say pi thirds. This is a reference solution, right? So I just kind of did that for scratch work if you're thinking about this. In which case, then we get x equals, well, what is cosine equal to negative 1 half? That's going to happen in the second quadrant when you reference pi thirds, which would be 2 pi thirds. And in the third quadrant when you reference pi thirds, which is 4 pi thirds. So that's that possibility. The other possibility is if cosine of x minus 1 equals 0. So if cosine of x minus 1 equals 0, that means cosine of x is equal to 1. And that, of course, happens for cosine at x equals 0 itself. 
Again, we're just going from zero up to two pi, but not included two pi. We don't need the general solution. Uh, and so these are the three solutions we end up with here. We get x equals zero, we get x equals two pi thirds, and we get four pi thirds as the three numbers that solve this quadratic equation, like so.